and I go, hey, hey, hey welcome everybody. Uh, it's Wednesday, it is 4 p.m. Pacific. That means it's time for Starfinder Wednesday. And today, oh, what about that video? Uh, it was amazing, spooky. I hope your lights were on and you had your favorite comfy blanket with you because, uh, you know, it was a good time. Um, yeah, it's me. Hey, Thirsty, how are you, buddy? It's good to see you in the chat. Today, oh, we've got a show for you. It's gonna be so good. Uh, phone the neighbors, wake the kids, as I like to say. We're gonna jump in and do a little bit of preview on the dias diaspora strain. Dias <laughs> Diaspora, diaspora strain. strain yeah. I got it. Don't worry. We'll edit that out. No one will leave it. <laughs> uh, and to do that, we've got the person that wrote it. And we're, uh, where's the right one? There it is. We've got Chris Sims in the studio. Yay! Hello. Chris Sims. Chris Sims. Uh, yeah, great use of static, right? That was really well done. Um, <laughs> when we first watched that uh, trailer, um, I think that uh, we I w wasn't sure what to expect, but uh, man, they did a really good job. Yeah. Uh, as soon as we're done here, I'll show it to you. Cause, okay. Because we just got it. Like it's yep. like we just put the finishing touches on it, and that was the premiere right there. We just showed it for the first time. So uh, you haven't even got to see the trailer for your own book. No. <laughs> nope. Nope. I haven't. <laughs> so uh, so as I said, we're uh, the the diaspora strain. Dias diaspora strain. Diaspora strain. I yeah. got it. See, I don't even trust myself now, even when I get it right. Um, that launches uh, today. today. I mean, it's yeah, brand yeah. new. Yeah. Um, the book, book one of the Signal of Screams adventure path yep. for Starfinder. Um, what's the levels on that? Uh, it starts at seventh level. Se seventh it level goes to thirteenth. Um, and uh, book one, you did this one. This right. one's yours. Yep, I did. Uh, are we? What was your? What was your? So basically. Uh, We'll we'll figure out a lot of this stuff as we go. I don't want to yeah. jump into too much of it, but it's a scary a scary book. Yeah, it's supposed to be scary. Nice. It's interesting because uh, I kind of got recruited to write this one. Really, and Jason Jason turned to me and he said, "So you really should." Jason Keeley, our fe my fellow developer, yes, uh, turned to me and said, "So you really should write an adventure path volume before you." get deep into developing Adventure Paths. <laughs> so I said, oh, Jason, I don't really want to write a whole Adventure Path. I have these other projects I'm doing. I, I, I want to have time to take care of it and do it right. Yeah. He said, you should do it. I said, okay, I'll do it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, so let me get this straight. So uh, the way that, that it operates around here in the design areas mm -hmm. is that uh, before you do anything else, you have to start by writing an AP. Like that, that's where it starts. Well, that's what he wanted me to do, <laughs> I guess. So yeah, I mean, and uh, it was a toss up whether I was going to write the first or second one, but I ended up writing the first one. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. What, um, so now what kind of, I, I would imagine that it was, was Keeley kind of in charge of the whole AP? Was he Yeah. So was he like was the, the lead developer lead of the developer. AP. I keep and, forgetting that and so we, ca we kind of alternate between APs mm -hmm. and he'll do be the lead for the adventures on one and then I'm the lead for the adventures on the next one. But I mean, I just started doing that. So I, th my first AP is gonna be coming out later oh, after nice. Signal Scream. So. Okay. So then when you're doing that uh, and you're writing the very first one, mm -hmm. what kind of, uh, kind of free reign do you get where you're like, ah, I'm gonna write this thing into it? Well, we, we outline things pretty well, but uh, there's a lot of free reign. I mean, there's a lot of influences in the diaspora strain. <laughs> uh, now you're just making fun of me. No, no. <laughs> no. I, I, I mispronounced that word too. But the thing is like, uh, so the key was that it starts like any horror movie. It starts normal mm -hmm. and then escalates. So uh, that was the fun part of writing it with some foreshadowing like occurs in all horror movies. Like, um, make you like some people that you're later going to have to deal <laughs> right. unkindly with, you know, yeah. stuff like that. Yeah. Or, uh, maybe, uh, uh, that, that one person that, that seems to be, uh, uh always there, always showing up. It's like, ah, oh, this is going to be a thing later. Yeah. I know it. Uh, are you a horror movie fan? You know what? The funny thing is I, I wouldn't call myself a horror movie fan. Mm -hmm. I like some horror movies, but, um, I'm not, I wouldn't call myself a fan. Okay. So uh, uh, I like running games that are yeah oriented that way. Yeah. But, um, uh, and I like some horror movies, but some horror movies are too much for me. Really? I'm, I'm a little bit wimpy when it comes <laughs> to that. <laughs> That's fine. I think for me, uh, you know, and, and this is by, by far nothing we're going to delve into, but I think for me it's uh, if it's just pure tension and horror and, like, thriller, I'm all for that. There, there was – for a while there was the – 
uh, the the tendency to go kind of excessively disgusting and yeah, all yeah. that stuff. And I'm like, yeah, if it's if it's scary, still that's fine. But just seeing all this fake gore is kind of old for me, you know. Yeah, for me, like the more real it is, the worse it is. Like to, right. to me, Cujo was terrifying. <laughs> yeah, like because yeah. it's a, this giant dog that dog. could that could go have rabies and this giant dog could really hurt you. Yeah. It, you know, <laughs> right. I mean, it's, it's, it's an extant thing. Whereas, you know, weird eyeless people that live under the earth is not that scary to me. I don't it's, think those really exist. Maybe. Yeah. Uh, we hope. They, yeah. They don't exist. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we'll say undecided. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so, uh, so getting into this. So uh, again, this is going to be spoiler free. So keep that in mind. Yeah. Um, we're going to give you a nice little preview of what to expect with, uh, um, with at least the first book. I don't think we, we're going to bother uh, even previewing the full uh, the full arc, the full story no. of Signal of Streams. We'll just stick to this one, I guess. Yeah. Um, and we can just go kinda, further in another. Yeah, yeah. Finders. There's more shows to come. We're not going anywhere. Um, so we can cover all those later. Um, so uh, let's let's do a nice intro, brief overview of of uh, the diaspora strain. So what happens is you. Uh, your characters somehow win or are invited to the opening or the soft reopening of a kind of posh exclusive uh, resort in the diaspora Okay. Uh, called New Elysium. Elysium. See, I don't know how to pronounce that word either. <laughs> New Elysium. Well, what people don't know is we usually just fumble our way through it yeah, also. Yeah. So, so uh, <laughs> and... Uh, Supposedly, this resort has uh, been renovated and gotten some upgrades, and they want to test some software that allows people to uh, interact with the resort without necessarily having to go to a person. Mm -hmm. um, and so they have invited famous people from all over the galaxy to nice. come and stay for, I think, a month and test out the stuff in this really posh resort. Okay. And... Uh, so then, uh, so the idea would be uh, the, the 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 PCs. It starts with them on their way to this thing, right? Uh, and, and they're seventh level, so they've already accomplished something. Yeah, which, which could mean that they're famous enough to to get oh, an, like to idea. get an exclusive invite. Uh, there's also the option for the GM to say that they want a contest that yeah. somebody entered them in or whatever. You so know, I, li so I like that that's open because then you get to make that your own interpretation right, of right. what fits the best, you know. Yeah. Uh, so they get there and uh, essentially it's this nice day spa relaxing thing, which if you're a seventh level, level hero, maybe this is the time to you put your feet up, kick back, uh, have a uh, um, a nice beverage. It's really an awesome place. Like the place you, like when you exit the ship, there's a huge open park area under a dome that you can see the sp space through and stuff like that. Oh, and, that's nice. And, I like that. You know, a huge hotel. It, it's got all the amenities. You know, anything that you would expect in a, like a casino resort. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's a, a space spa. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, all right. So they're there. They're enjoying everything. Things great. Mm -hmm. Life is good. Right. But, but like any horror movies, things go wrong. It has to. It has to go wrong. Okay. Uh, one of the things that I, I I don't think that this is a spoiler, but uh, uh, is that things seem to be going a little weird. But hopefully, the players don't know what they can trust and what they can't. They don't know uh, if what they like see that. or sense is true. So okay. when I was making this uh, adventure, I watched movies like Oculus, which oh, is nice. illusion, you know, where you see things that aren't real or like some of my favorite stuff from when I was a kid, like the Poltergeist movie. You know. Okay. You're in the Poltergeist movie. A guy is sitting in front of a mirror and he imagines that he has like a little worm in his face <laughs> yeah. and then he starts to <laughs> dig into his face and kind of. Uh, so I, it's that type of thing. I wish I could say that's the first time that face ripoff guy from Poltergeist has been mentioned on this show. <laughs> Second time. Yeah. I And it was a, the Starfinder show. It was another Starfinder show with yeah. Keeley. So uh, that guy made an impression on a lot of us, I think. I, yeah. That was uh, that was a great scene. Yeah. I love that one. Drops the chicken, all the maggots. Yeah, yeah. Ah, what a good scene. I love that movie. And, but the, po the point is that when he finishes doing that, uh -huh. he blinks and everything's normal again, right? Yeah. Yeah. So so there's these little little things that people are kind of experiencing but can't say 
that I definitely experienced this or something right. like that. Or the evidence is that they clearly didn't actually experience it. Like they have, they have a really <laughs> yeah. intense experience and then all of a sudden it becomes obvious that it wasn't real. Right? Uh-huh, uh-huh. Uh, which plays into the tension of the adventure as it escalates because you start to see things and encounter things and you have to decide how to react to them based on whether they might not be real. Yeah, yeah. Which, and in the Starfinder universe, there are dangerous things that you better think that they're real right away, right? <laughs> right. So you have to take everything serious, right. like just in case. Yeah. Um, but let me ask you this before we move on. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this was brought up in the chat, and I think that this is a really good question. If a Yasoki is going to wear a pair of swim trunks to get in the hot tub or whatever, mm-hmm. do they have a hole cut for their tail? Or does that, do they bun it up like when somebody buns up their hair oh man you gotta you put your tail through the you through, have a tail you, yeah hole, you have right? a, okay. a, a very well sealed tail hole perfect there you it's go it's high tech it's high uh, tech world put that on the boards that's now, <laughs> that's no <now> canon <laughs> also uh did, that opener did did they already see the opener they saw the opener yeah do you yeah. want to show that again look with, at that that looks that comfy. amazing hairy back <laughs> you're so <laughs> yeah. I think that's when the question started uh, <laughs> started coming about. Yeah, that's canon now. Tail, whole canon. Yeah. Uh, thanks to Starfinder Wednesday. So when you're feeling... I mean, it, it looks like some Starfinder armor has tail holes for Yosoki. So I think I, that's I, true. You know, so, yeah. yeah. So. so there you go. When you're filling out your comment cards for Starfinder Wednesday, make sure you put that in there, that we got the hard answers. Yeah. Uh, it's uh, perfect. Yes, it is. Canon horn. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, all right. So some people... Now, is this across the board? People are thinking that they're having these experiences, or is it a couple people? Is it... Uh, it turns out to be everyone in the resort. Everyone in the resort. So then you would guess that uh, based on that, some folks are going to be like, we got to figure something out. Like, yeah, something's yeah. happening. Yeah, so eventually, as things escalate, the player characters being heroes uh, are kind of... They can either decide on their own or they can be recruited by the uh, staff at the facility to help out with like investigating what's going on to uncover things. And like all good horror movies, there are some avenues that don't bear fruit or they seem to. Uh you know. And that also plays into that idea that you can't trust what you perceive. Yeah. So. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, it, we're not saying the word red herring, but right. just some things don't pan out and some things might. And Well, and things can be given a reason that they don't actually have because they seem to be related, but they end up not being related, for example, or right. something like that. Right. So then uh, because it is taking place in at this resort, mm-hmm. right, and um, I would imagine that you and, – and I've not played the thing, so I don't know. But I would imagine you have the idea – it's not so much on rails. It's not so much now you need to go here, now you need to go here. Do you, Are you kind of able to explore a little bit freely through this thing at the beginning? Yeah, I mean it, it, it becomes a little more directed as uh, the social aspect of the – you know the the intro of the movie right winds down and the the horror starts to escalate right. so it, then it becomes a little more directed nice um just because uh there are specific avenues of exploration and stuff like that that uh-huh. you have options to go down but it's not the opening especially is really free form and getting to know the other npcs in the resort mm-hmm. and stuff like that so it's it's pretty cool that way i i enjoyed writing all of that stuff about getting to know certain NPCs, how they react to you, and uh, how they react to certain situations that occur at the beginning of the adventure when things are more or less peaceful. Okay. You know, so. And then when it when it gets not peaceful, it it gets uh, pretty not peaceful, I would imagine. Like that's right. just the whole point of uh, how it goes. I'm actually showing the uh, the the apparition show, uh, right. image right now, and which is great. One of the reasons I selected this image is because the uh, it still plays into what is real and what isn't. Right. Like, uh, that looks like a pretty scary encounter from the standpoint of the mechanics of the game, right? There's That's a large number of creatures. Yeah, know? yeah. Uh, but, uh, again, we're still playing with perception. And uh, kind of the whole point of this adventure is to introduce the arc of the campaign 
uh, while kind of teaching you as the player not to necessarily trust everything as it is. Right. Which right. is also a big horror trope. I mean, you know, so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, how much of this, so when you were putting this thing together, knowing that it was going to kind of follow some of those horror tropes, mm-hmm. how much of this were you like, okay, that's too much. Like, I'm, I'm just, th- this is too formula at this point. Or were you like, you know what? Everything in the kitchen sink. I want to put it all in there and let's just have fun with it. I, I really wanted to have fun with it, but I, I don't think that anything, I, sl- I thought anything was too much. I took pieces of different things that I think people will recognize mm-hmm. and put them together in a way that uh, I don't want to say it hasn't been done before because it probably has, but it, it's uh, it's not exactly like anything that I'm aware of insofar as an extant piece of media, mm-hmm. but it calls back to those things. So if you enjoy those types of movies and that type of stuff, you'll see pieces. You'll say, oh, you know, that's like The Shining, you know, yeah. or that type of thing. So. Yeah, and it's more, uh, I would imagine it's more of an homage. And, yeah, yeah, and that of course, sort of yeah. Thing. I, you know, I think for me personally, like a lot of those movies are still scary because they were so well done. They found a right. way to get in your brain and yeah. make you, uh, you know, scared on a different level than just a jump scare, you know. Well, and, yeah, and The Shining was a, another example of, what is perception right? yeah oh yeah, yeah absolutely like that awful scene where he sees the lady in the bathroom mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. so very 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 scary and yeah. then you know there's other like the uh, I think for me the, the the really visual one is like the the elevators of blood and just gushing yeah. out and then no that that never happened that's fine you know yeah. and I mean I can go on and on about because it is one of my favorite horror movies I, lo- I love The Shining so much it's just it I, I, I first saw it when I was uh a kid like in second grade you know and wow scared me to death <laughs> yeah like the poltergeist when i was little that scared me but today it's more like just a weird adventure story. yeah but the but you know the shining takes place in a resort yeah so just south of here. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly yeah. uh and is and and is there uh a maze a hedge maze or hedge animals, if you read the book, it, it, they're different, you know. But no, I think I can say this without it being a spoiler too. So the resort is built on a, a asteroid that w- was formerly a mine. Ah, okay. So the hedge mage is the mine. So there's <laughs> there, there is some cavernous things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, it does. It does explain a lot now that you mention it. Uh, second grade might have been a little too early, but it got me into <laughs> horror films. Like I actually really started appreciating horror films. Um, uh, we can get into that at some other time. When we do the Dan show, we'll explore all of that. Well, I mean, stuff, horror so. horror games and horror films is kind of a safe way to be scared. It's not, you know. Yeah, yeah, and you know, it's. I I always thought it was kind of fun to be scared. Yeah, like, I, I really thought it was. Well, a good I mean, time. you're sitting on your couch. You're with people who share your interests, or you're sitting at the table similarly and rolling dice. Uh, yeah, it's a fun way to be scared yeah. rather than the alternative <laughs> See, you know, and, and that's that's where you know it gets into to the thing where it's like that's that's being scared from a little play that's happening inside of a tv or whatever mm-hmm. as opposed to uh it, it in a way it's almost uh e- escaping the real stuff that is genuinely to my core very terrifying yeah yeah you know i understand uh, that yeah uh but yeah another, anyway <laughs> another thing that's great about this this book not just the adventure mm-hmm. uh this book also includes guidelines for running horror games uh, in Starfinder. Oh, so it gives us like pointers yeah. and, and all that kind of stuff. And that article is by Epidiah Ravikal, who wrote the Dread role playing game. So yes, that, yes. It's a really, a really fine thing to have in the book too. I um I am such a fan of Dread. I think that game is one of my favorite games. Yeah. Uh, because it is uh, made. To be a, a somewhat disposable game, like you make these tropes, these characters yeah, yeah. that fit into these easy to define boxes, and and at first you're like, oh, that's weird, you know, I'm 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 the nerd or I'm the jock or whatever. Yeah. Uh, but then you realize that is exactly what you're supposed to do. It plays right into its you know right into its strong point, which is yeah, you may not survive this game, and that's right. okay. And I love it. I think if you've not played Dread, give it a shot. It is a blast. I and think I actually so hope fun. that some people play. Uh, the signal screams adventure path that way where they just make up characters for it. And they're like, okay, well we're going to accept that this is a horror story and some of us aren't going to make it. That would be great. Uh, yeah. So. Would you rec- No, but you, you can't change. I mean, you can't play with the Jenga tower or anything like that, but 
it would be really cool to make those disposable. See, and that that's the thing. I, I like that idea. I like the way that character creation happens in Dread, where mm-hmm. you're answering these questions, answering, and then you get this question out of left field, and you're like, oh, okay, I guess that's a that's a part of my character. But why did that happen? And I love that so much. It is yeah. such a such a good time. Um, and so uh, you heard it here first. Chris Sims is offering to run a Dread style game of uh, the. Am I? Did I did I say that? I think you did. Did I say that? I don't know. We'll have to watch the tape. But in the meantime, (laughs) we'll just assume that you did and it's all good. Um, So, uh, all right then. Anything else that we need to cover about this before we start some q and I don't know. I mean, if we went too too much further, we'd start. And then we get into spoiler, spoiler territory. territory. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so let's do this. I'm going to do a sign off. So I, I do. Oh, yeah. I do want to say that, say. like most horror movies, there are people that you will like in the beginning, mm-hmm. and that you'll get to know, and you'll be like, "Oh, this is cool." And uh, yeah, you'll have to be not so likable later. Okay. So <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I, I think that that's the best. I think. Uh, uh, you know, because there's usually a couple ways to go about that, and it's fun exploring where that goes. You know, yeah. And with the perception um, altering thing, it doesn't. It's not going to be clear, right? Right. Right. So interesting. Well, I'm excited. I can't wait. Um, and uh, we'll figure out on the schedule when you want to come in and run that game. Okay. So anyway, uh, all right. Well, let's do this. I'm going to say goodbye, and we'll sign off, and then we'll do some Q and A. Okay. How do you feel about that? Sounds good. All right. Cool. Uh, all right, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. If you liked it, please uh, hit subscribe and hit the bell notification button. Uh, and uh, we would love to have you back every week to watch. If we're getting ready to start a Q and A right now, and if you'd like to be a part of that. Join us on Twitch every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Pacific, where after we do this fun little half hour of witty banter that we're so good at, we do some (laughs) Q&A with the chat. And uh, that's a really fun time. So uh, in the meantime, for Paizo and for Chris and for me, your old buddy Dan, thank you so much for joining us. And we will see you again next week. Bye. Thank you. Bye.